What's going on, folks? Grandison Signs here with Saduri International. And welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Silver Tongue Broadcast, a Saduri International production. This is our podcast platform where we talk about specific subject matter. This week, we're going to continue our 11-part series. We're on part number eight. It's called the Leadership Path, the Essence of Excellence and Successful Leadership. Today, we're going to be talking about the heart. Now, I'll show you the graphic here later on. I have with me, though, as always, my business partner and uh, and and coach extraordinaire. <laughs> well, thank you for that grandeur um, introduction. Thank right. you, Brandon. Right. You're welcome. From the heart, leadership from the heart, I have a quote for you. True leadership is not defined by power or authority, but by the courage to lead with the heart. It is in the depths of compassion, empathy, and understanding that a leader forges connections, inspires greatness, and mm. guides others towards mm. a brighter future. That is a very, very powerful quote. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Before we get into the subject matter, though, make sure that you share this podcast wherever you're listening to it. Why? Because our entire goal is to reach all the way to the other side of the world, get this information over to other leaders like yourself, giving it to those emerging leaders, get to those senior leaders. And we want to make sure that all the information that we give during these sessions is information you can put to use right after the broadcast. So take out a pen, get your pay, your, pen, your paper, get your mobile device, whatever it is, take some notes because we have some information going to share with you. This is one of the more this is one of the more essential sessions that we're going to be talking about, talking about the heart and leadership, which a lot of people don't talk about. They may mention it, but they don't like, they don't dive into it like we're going to dive into it today. So that's what I want to make sure you guys do. So grab pen, paper, let's take some copious notes. And we would like for you to subscribe our YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell while you are there. I didn't hear the bell, Gratison. What I happened to that? I did hit the bell. Uh, you want it again? There yeah. you go. There, I wanted this there time. You <laughs> there you go. We are also on Spotify, iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram Reels, uh, YouTube Shorts also. While on YouTube, where we are on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook, look us up as Sidori International. Yep, absolutely right. And we'll be taking the long form video content like we make here, and we'll be making these shorter nine by 16 shorts, reels, and TikTok videos so that you can also get the, the quick little snappy little sound bites that you can take and utilize right away. We also have some classes that are coming up, but before I talk about the classes that yes, means gonna be holding, I'll be holding, we wanna make sure that we accentuate our service, our core services is the coaching. We make sure that we coach emerging leaders all the way to senior leaders. We also train, we also supplement the training with the coaching as part of our methodologies to make sure that all the concepts and tools and tips that we talk about are extremely embedded in your mindset. And then finally, the consulting piece of it as well, making sure that we take you through the different plans that we have, a leadership development plan for those emerging leaders, map out a strategic plan on how they're going to get to their goals of being the formidable leader that they're supposed to be. We also have a, a communication plan, a communication and accountability plan. Those two are also integrated together. If you are a leader, how do you take your message from the helm, the top of your organization and permeate it all the way down through all the different layers, all the way to the specialist level of the organization? Well, that's all about strategy. And that's what those the communication plan and the accountability plans for. The accountability plan is a little bit deeper dive, though, because that way we get into what makes accountability work, which also evolves the culture. So if you're talking about evolving your culture to a, a, a level where you have this these high level ideas of being extremely accountable which you need to have to have high performing teams that one that, that's what that one's all about we also have the dei plan so if you have a diversity equity and inclusion plan not just the training and coaching but a whole entire plan 
We also work with organizations to do that. And finally, the BPM or BPO, which is the business process management, business process optimization. How do we take processes in the organization, refine them so that they have a higher productivity yield and they're also more efficient, which also equals more profitability. So those are our services. As I mentioned, the classes that we have coming up, and we have some future dates coming up, we're in the process of making sure that we give you fantastic information. Yasmin's gonna be talking about critical thinking and strategic thinking. So we're gonna do a just a free overall concept class that you can attend, attend for free and then buy into the program that she's gonna be talking about. We're gonna take smaller classes of this ones too. So only up to five, we may have to do multiple classes, but five, maybe 10, five is a good sweet spot because that's how we coach right now in our groups to make sure we get all the interaction and make sure the skill set is firmly embedded in your mindset. I personally will be talking about assertiveness, one of the most prominent and important skill sets that a leader can have. And in fact, before I roll that out, I'm going to be doing a 10 part video series on the 10 signs that you will recognize that you will say, hey, you know what? It connotes that you need more assertive training. Assertive training is a real thing. Look it up. You don't have to believe me, but go look it up. Do your research. But it's a very formidable skill set, and it's very taxing, though. So word of warning beforehand, this is a very, very highly intense class, okay? So if you don't have the stomach for it, we don't want you in the program. It's one of those. It's one of those. Gratison, you're scaring people. Oh, well, like I, hey, you know, leadership isn't easy, so we just yes. have to give it the way it comes, right? We get we have some real role play scenarios. When I say real, I mean we're going to be role playing. That's extremely important. We're going to do video presentation. All these other things that really challenge your confidence and kind of challenge your assertiveness. But it's all about becoming this assertive leader. Twelve weeks of training. Excuse me. Twelve weeks of coaching and training. Right. Twelve weeks of coaching. Coach and do methodology for both of these. We coach one week, you go out, you have the whole entire week to come about and test and experiment with that particular skill set and then add it to your leadership style. So we are, it's pretty intense though. I want to warn you. Yeah, it means it's intense too. The mind's gonna get really I know what I've got going for you. It's gonna be <laughs> you know, <laughs> as you're talking about intense, I can see those um tasers on both sides. <laughs> Right, exactly. Right here in their head, right here in the temples, are just shocking right into you. No, not you it, it, it'll be pretty intense, but <laughs> it won't be that intense. No physical harm. We promise you that. So if you want to send us an email, send it to info at Siduri International.com, info at Siduri, S E D U I R E I N T L dot com. We answer all of the questions that come about. We get a plethora of them. And if you have anything, or you can reach out to us directly if you know our email address. I won't give that out right here. But the info one, I will get it. Yasmin will get it. Someone in our organization will get it. And we'll make sure that we answer you as well. All right? Cool. There you have it. Anything else you want to mention, Yasmin? No, you're snapping a lot today. Snapping. I'm on it today. I'm on it. I We're know. I can yes. tell. Absolutely. All right. So now we'll talk about the content. We're going to dive into the eighth, eighth part, the leadership path, the essence of excellence in leadership, talking about the heart. Yes, that thing right there. The proverbial heart, not the actual physical organization or as the organization, the organism or the organ that you have in your that pumps the blood. But when we talk about leadership and we, we ask the question, what do we mean by the heart when we come to leadership? Well, there was an old commercial back in the 70s that used to say that at the end of the commercial, it used to say the mind is a terrible thing to waste. I'm going to add on to that. I'm going to say the heart can be a complex and tricky place because the heart, we started talking about the heart. In fact, let me show you the graphic right now. Here's the graphic that we've been showing you for the past seven sessions or seven episodes for this graphic. Right now, we're talking about this one right up here at, at the apex of this triangle, talking about the heart. It's the smaller portion of it, but most people never get there. Most people never leave from the heart. A lot of times we like to manage from the numbers. We like to manage from the performance aspect of things. But when you start talking to and dealing with people, you really have to adhere to the heart. Now, all these other sections, as you see within the, the color spectrum that you see internally within the triangle, we did all seven parts going up to human nature, now we're at the purple aspect of this, the apex, the heart, the heart, the heart, the heart. Now the heart is, I say it's tricky because 
There are a lot of times that people try to manipulate and pull on the heartstrings. And you have to be a very, very discerning leader. And you have to have the skill set, the discernment skill set beforehand. You have to listen to intuition, but you also have to couple it and interlace it with the knowledge, the wisdom and insight that you have so that your heart doesn't get played. It's a <laughs> land, it's a landmine. Actually, as he's laughing. It's a <laughs> landmine to be utilized strategically. And if it's manipulated in the wrong way, and we've seen this, Jasmine, you can attest to it. We've seen this at times where people are just pulling on the heartstrings for their manipulation to serve for self-serving purposes. Yeah. And this is where the leader has to be very adept and his her, her skill set has to be attentive and listening and making sure the observation skills are turned on because if you are not that you can be very much so swayed, swindled, bamboozled, tricked into capitulating to someone else's demands and you don't even know it. That's how tricky this can be. Yeah. So the heart is one of these is, again, it's not the physical organ that you have in your body, but this is the part of you that has the compassion, the empathy, the sympathy part of leadership that you need in order to have that softer part of you as a leader. No matter how stern you are, if you have the heart you can still be assertive but you also have that compassion you have that 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 the passion the compassion the passion the sympathy the empathy in order to move your agenda forward for you not just for you but also for whoever you're dealing with and the organization the people that you serve and you know Granison, one of my my bosses my mentors he told me one time that know when to you have to learn when to open the doors to your heart and very when true to and when to close right. them shut. Right. right. And when to keep them slightly ajar. <laughs> so yeah. there is a two-way street. Yeah. And that always stayed with me. And I want to reiterate the quote that I quoted earlier. True leadership is not defined by the power of authority. Right. People will shoot orders here and there, but by the courage to lead with the heart. How many people have the courage to lead with the heart? Because it's very tough, like Grandison said, it's a very tricky place to lead from. And if you don't know how to lead from the heart, you can be taken advantage of. It is in the depths of compassion, empathy, and understanding that a leader forges the connection, inspires greatness, and guides others towards a brighter future. So it's with the heart that you make connections, not by throwing and demanding things sure. and throwing orders. Well it's stated. That compassion and that empathy. So yeah. having said that, Grandison, my first question to you is, why should, though I've explained a little bit, I want you to go into detail. Why should the leader lead with his or her heart? Very good question. I'm going to add to what you said previously about it goes in with the quote. We have this other adage that when people wear their heart on their sleeve, you know what that means, right? It means that the person is very, very sensitive, have easy access to the, someone's emotions. So why should a leader lead from his heart? Because the leader always wants to lead from a place of authenticity. Human nature is that we, most of us, there are some people who have some disabilities in their mindset that allows us to make connections with people, to be authentic, to show compassion, to show empathy, to show sympathy. And so a leader should lead from his heart in terms of how is this going to be beneficial, not just for me personally, but also for the other person. Our innate thought process is mainly selfish, but we have to extend to the second level of thinking, which is the altruistic aspect. And this is where the heart comes into play. We start thinking about the third level of thinking when we start talking about in our modalities, I'm naming one of the modalities, five levels of thinking. We start talking about the expressive level, which is the third level. That is the thought on the empathetic and sympathetic thinking as a leader. And it starts with the head, or it starts with the feeling of the heart and the thing that you may want to desire and feel and and transmit to the other person. Then it's all about structuring what it is you're about to communicate before you release it. Because some things said that can be said from the heart may be a bit intrusive. Sometimes it may make people uncomfortable. So we have to wrap it around some, some ideas of being very direct, but also making sure that we have the empathy 
putting ourselves in the other person's shoes when we're actually leading from the heart as well. So that's why leaders lead from the heart. Yeah, and then we, I don't know, we talked about this, uniting people for a common purpose. Yes. You know, when you lead in with the heart, you unite people together and the warmth. People will feel the warmth of a leader that leads with the heart. Yes, true. And the one that doesn't, you can feel that ice as, as well. Yeah, but, true. Very cold, right? <laughs> yeah, cold leaders. And I can name a few right now, you know, but I, this is not a political show. But anyway, leading with the heart, uniting people for a common purpose, solidifying relationships. People yeah. come together and then become high performing teams because they are closer in bond due to that warmth yeah that. and we have people that we work with that come into the program they're very cold very calloused and we have to over time this is not automatic and it's not a quick fix is over time we have to allow them to have this safe place so they can start opening up and start leading people from the heart because they're, these are the people who come across as taskmasters first because they come in and they're cracking the whip. It's okay, there's a point that in time when they crack the whip, but it's also in order to balance out the scales, you all, and the pendulum swings both ways, you have to be able to sit down, chat with someone from the heart mm -hmm. and communicate that way. They'd be very distinct about what you're saying there. Yes, you want to interject with something? No, no, no. That was going to lead into the, my next question, uh -huh. which was what's the negative side of using the heart in leadership? Well, the negative side is one that's easily manipulated. The heart can be easily, easily manipulated, especially by people who are very, very charismatic. So the more charismatic person you're talking to, the more they're going to pull, the more they can have the ability to pull on your heartstrings. This is where the discernment comes into play. So you have to make sure that from a negative side, it's easy to manipulate it. And once it's easy to manipulate, then it also seeps into the emotions. That's the, the really powerful part of, 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 of hearing, if you do this right, you being the leader and attaching your thoughts and intents to someone's heart because it gets to their emotions, which also can be a driving factor. But the driving factor can be either positive or negative. And so think about it reciprocated coming towards you as well. So it can, you can, someone can tap into your heart and really cause this wave of emotions that can get you outside of your leadership frame. Let me repeat that again. It can get you outside of your leadership frame because when you have a, this leadership mindset and it's, it's a, a continuous holding of a frame that you never break continue and it takes a lot of energy if you go back to the graphic here you can see on the outside of this particular graphic we have energy here right on the left side it takes a lot of energy to be not only charismatic but also caring but also not to be manipulated and to heart to guard your heart i mean they have all yeah. these quotations about the heart guard your heart don't wear your heart on your sleeve and make all these things that we talk about so it's hard to protect at times so we have to be very diligent, very strategic, and make sure, like Yasmin said, you can leave the little gap, but don't open it so wide to where it takes you a longer time to shut it and someone's already in there pulling on the heart string. Yes, right? it's, a, it's an art. Leading with a heart is an art. Hey, yes. That's a good quote. There you go. I'll write that one down. <laughs> and, and what I was going to also share, what you alluded to earlier on, was that when when you're not warm or when you're not leading with the heart then you are of course not compassionate you're leading with your heart shut i was not always warm and fuzzy leader really especially especially no when, you no <laughs> no go ahead especially <laughs> when i became a new um multi-unit leader it was get the job done i don't have time to waste I don't need to be compassionate because compassion is weakness. Yeah. That was my way of thinking. <laughs> Crack the whip, get the job done, and and you know what? Don't have time for, for small talk and all that. And what happened was that, oh, I got the job done, but people were not happy. Mm, with you, personally. Yes, people yeah. work for people. 
Yeah. And uh, my boss pulled me aside one day. He says, you know, you're doing a great job, but I want you to work on something, compassion. I said, what the heck is that? <laughs> <laughs> what the heck is compassion? What are you doing? Who uses that nowadays, right? <laughs> <laughs> he said, be a little gentler, a little calmer. Listen mm. to people. Hear what they're saying. S stop and smell the roses. I'm like, but mm. I've got places to go. I've got things to do, he said have others do it for you let the work let the magic work for itself lead with your heart and people will do whatever you want because, and that's a very strong factor yeah because they 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 love you and they trust you and like the saying goes people work for people that don't work for companies so i just wanted to add that that compassion goes long ways and it becomes easier as you become a compassionate leader instead of the ice queen or king. Yeah. And especially for the emerging leaders. Because I remember when I first got into leadership too, it was all about performance, right? You have this mindset that I'm going to do well, I'm going to lead these yeah. people. And you, and as you mature, then that's when you start tapping into the heart. That's why we had to top, have it at the top. Because all the time, you're building these foundational principles, you're learning how to get your feet wet in the right places, you learn how to, your, to balance, you learn how to stand on your own two feet per se, but you don't get to the, the heart portion of it until you mature as a leader. Yes. However, people that I also see in senior leadership, they are senior in their, in their tenure of leadership, but not senior in the implementation of leadership, meaning yes. that they haven't ascended to leading from the heart yet because you can lead and manage people from the heart, but also have this very high performance going on as well. And those two never are, are they're always intertwined, they always intersect, they never yep. separate. They, they yep. work together. Oh. They absolutely work together. So my next question, you walk right into it, was when mm -hmm. a leader uses his or her heart and leadership, what are its effects? Point number one, this the, the, the main thing is that centered around relationships are these emotional connections. Leadership, the difference between a leadership, a leader and an influencer is the relationship, mm -hmm. that emotional connection. The, the influencer might not have the ability to touch someone at mass scale at the heart level. There's a lot going on there. You can't really interact. So you don't really know how that person's thinking. You can hear what they say on one side, but you don't have that back and forth to, to cultivate a relationship with a leader there's a relationship now i have the back and forth you hear my, how i think i hear how you think we have nonverbal communication everything else that's accentuated in our conversations and so you have this very strong emotional connection so leaders who lead from the heart are are very emotionally connected to their team members this is how you start getting the high performing teams in fact one of the six components is a solid or developing solid relationships so that's one thing. Two, you have this, you leave from this place of authenticity, which cultivates trust and credibility at the same time. Being authentic and how you communicate and how you deal with people, how you are expressing, expressive thinking, how you're expressing yourself to the other person takes a, a bit of vulnerability, but at the same time, it also takes you being very cognizant of how vulnerable you are being so that you can quickly recuperate and shut the door if someone decides they don't want to be manipulative at that instance and really try to get in, pull the heartstrings. You know, I'm glad you said that because I was taking notes as you were talking. Leading from the heart doesn't mean that <clears throat> you will not discipline someone. True. Just like children, you love your, your kids. Exactly the opposite happens, yeah. But when they do something wrong, they're disciplined as well. If someone is not performing, no matter how close you are to them, mm -hmm. how much attachment you have as a leader, you will still have to learn that art. I said leading with the heart is an art. That art of discipline, stopping them in the track and redirecting them, pivot, redirect. You have yeah. to do that as a leader. It's you have big shoes to fill. It's yeah. not easy to open your easy. heart and then know when to shut. Open, no. shut, leave it yep. slightly open. It is definitely an art. It is yeah. definitely an art. Yeah. It's a very, 
strategic art that you should, when I say you, whoever's listening to this, you should really focus on what Yasmin just said because you do have to be open and have this point of vulnerability at times. There are times where you have to share your stories or where you made your mistakes mm-hmm. and have someone tap into that. Then when they start talking, you see that it might be going a different way, especially if you're managing conflict or something like that. And there's a selfish motivation point to their outcome. You want to be able to guard your heart then and make the logical, more rational, analytical decision than at, at the time too. And there's a time, there's a heart, there are times when the heart and the head, they're warring. I mean, they're they have they have conflict, right? You want to do something like this, you feel this from the heart, but then logic and experience and dealing with this this person or people says otherwise. But you have your intent, the right coming from the heart. That's the, the right way, but you have to make a quote tough decision at times in order to make sure that you go down the right path so that the outcome that you want is desirable for both parties, not just you, for both parties, because you can go the opposite way too and pull the other heartstrings. Heart and you might have to fire someone also. Sure. Yeah. If the performance is not there, yeah. Yeah. with the heart doesn't mean that, you know, oh, he has kids and he has family. Yes, if you're a good leader, you've led them the right way. You have talked about performance and you give them feedback. Try to develop them. Yeah, they yeah. will know. They will know the minute you call them in to, to make it the final day what they did right and what they did wrong and more wrong than right. And they will, they, they will understand. And that's the tough thing about terminating, terminations and terminating someone is it always or oftentimes pulls on the heartstrings, especially if that person yeah. is good at being a genuine person, but not just good at doing that particular role. Yeah. And they don't get it, right? I had to let a, a nice guy go one time, a very, very nice guy. And I'm talking about my personal experience, I acquired him when this other corporate company bought the company I was with, and I acquired him as a team member, and I brought some other team members with me. And he was a he was a good dude, very nice dude. And but it pulled on my heartstrings to let him go. But he just couldn't grasp some of the things and the concepts and the system that needed to, to for the the proper job performance. And there wasn't another place because I did look in order, could I move him some other place first before letting him go and ultimately had to make the decision. That pulled on my heartstring for a bit. I and mean, it took me just to feel good about it a couple of days just to get back into it. Yeah. Feel wow. good screen, right? Yeah, it was, it was a tough decision. You know, the first time I dive, I have let go of a lot of good people. And the thing is, they're good people. As a person, they're a good person. Right. but they're not the right fit right. for yeah. that job or that company. And as sure. a leader, you have to identify that, and they need to know that. When you set expectations, they should know the expectations and their responsibilities, and you should hold them accountable. Yeah. It's not right. All with a heart. And when it doesn't happen, when you give them feedback, on top of feedback, there has got to be a time that – that feedback is going to run into that wall, the dead end. That then you, you got to make a decision. Yes, you got to make a decision. Yep. And it's got to be very respectful. Yeah. And it's got to part ways respectfully, and they'll understand. Yeah. They will know, like I said, that this is not the right fit for me. You're yeah. a great boss, you know, but I know what you demand. I can't do, and I can't give you what you are expecting. So sure. out of respect for you, they will understand. Either they'll quit or you'll have to respectfully let them go. One of the other final points I want to make with this, because this is extremely important for you who are listening to this, is that when you lead with the heart, one of the, one of the better outcomes and effects of this is having this positive culture in your organization. Here's a kicker, though. It has to come from the top. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't come from the top, that leader, whatever culture that leader is putting out there, either by default or strategically, and if it's mm-hmm. negative, it's going to infect all other levels of the organization. The only power that you have is to manage your department in a certain way. 
And there will be times when it's going to be very, very tough because mm -hmm. you're going to have to protect your people and your department in a certain way, especially if the culture is not cultivated to be a have this open thought process and leading from the heart. Now, I'm not saying that performance isn't there, but I will tell you that the positive culture, organizations that have this positive culture, the leader at the helm, the person who is solely responsible, mainly responsible for permeating the culture, or I should say infecting his first level subordinates or his or her first level subordinates, which then goes into the different departments from the other CXOs down to the VPs or senior VPs down to the different departments. The leader at the top has the biggest job in order to start cultivating a positive <clears throat> culture that, that fosters engagement, that fosters guidance, that fosters mentoring, coaching, and communicating, leading from the heart. If not, it'll be a futile fight in order to have that pushed up to subordinates. Not gonna happen. The, mm -hmm. the power that you have in that instance, it may be uncomfortable for you, but just to manage your group as that particular silo permeate a certain culture. And this is where Yasmin was talking about people work for people because then they're going to follow your lead. That whole aspect of the game we used to play when we were little kids, follow the leader. Remember, I don't know if you guys played it where you were, but we played it in Zara's Pakistan, but we played it a lot here. And this is how kids start to understand how to follow other people and start to, because of human nature in that aspect. The positive culture is extremely important. I just want to accentuate that a little bit. What do you have to say about fostering a positive culture with leading with the heart? Well, same thing. Like I said, it uh, you know it's it fosters not only trust, loyalty, sense of belonging, and in turn, it enhances collaboration and performance. Sure. Yeah. And if we talk about human nature, people want to be heard. So. If you're leading from the heart, you're going to have the opportunity to make sure that their people, your people are heard. They want to feel valued. So having that value feeling that they matter in the organization by giving them the empowered, the powering aspect of doing certain things for their level of authority as well. And also connoting to them that, hey, you need to also lead from the heart, but also lead from a performance management standpoint. Yeah. Cultivating the relationships. Absolutely. Right? The, the, the whole aspect of making sure that all of your team members are infected with this positive thought process of feeling value. They also want to feel acknowledged, giving them the knowledge, giving them the proverbial slap on the back and the proverbial fist bump by acknowledging out in the open when there's a thing done right, especially continuously. And but also having to... Say again. Each other too. Collaboration, helping each yeah, other. Collaboration. Yes. Yeah. yeah. People so another, want to have this these feelings. Go ahead. What are you gonna say? Yeah, another effect. The first one was emotional connection. Another effect lead from leading from the heart is uh, authenticity and trust. What can you talk? Tell me a little bit about that. Well, on this is authenticity. We talk about the five parts of the authentic self, which also. Permeate, permeates the heart aspect of this thing, meaning that the mind, the will, the imagination, the emotions, and the intellect. When you start talking from the heart, you tap into someone's mind in a positive way, their will, you can then bend their will, right? You can, when I say bend their will, they're going to make the decision to actually bend their will. You're just influencing it. You have the imagination. People start to utilize the imagination in a more constructive and the proper way to solve problems and the critically thinking about situations, those sorts of aspects as well. People also start having their emotions in check as well because you're gonna help them manage their emotions, but you're also gonna to communicate to them with the, all the authenticity of the things that doesn't make the emotions flare up. So you may have a passion or you may have this passion that you talk with and you're leading them, but it's not misleading or it's not derogatory and or or being so, some sort of negative manner in that fact. But then also from an intellectual standpoint, giving them the proper guidance and leading and education and things that they need in order to foster true leadership, you're going to make sure that you help them understand that. All of that builds trust. Mm -hmm. 
when done right, all of that builds trust. And then you get to this point where you're leaving. They want to follow you, right? Because they know you. They like you. They trust you. They know your heart and intent on how you do things. They know that this is a stand-up guy or a stand-up lady. And whatever, however you identify yourself, whatever it may be, it's going to be very advantageous. Again, not just for you, not just for them either, from an altruistic standpoint, but for also the people that you're serving. And that's what it's all about. So talking about that serving gets into this other point of servant leadership. A lot of times with leadership, we think about how we want people to do things for us, which is fine. That's actually the right way to think about it. At the same time, balance. We're all supposed to be serving them in the way that allows them to be empowered, to be resourceful, to already to provide the resources for them. We're supposed to be the, the provision for that and making sure that they also understand how to manage, but not only manage, but lead and then lead from the heart. So it has a, these multifaceted benefits. Mm-hmm. Then also the uh, another effect is inspirational leadership. I just want to say a little, a uh, few things about that. So leaders who lead with the heart inspire and motivate others through their passion and purpose. Right. Right. They have a purpose because they can feel it. They communicate compelling vision. They have a vision and they share it with enthusiasm and commitment and, and they, build their team with that enthusiasm and the commitment. Uh, anything you want to add to the inspirational leadership? Uh, yeah, I can add something to that and I'll make it condense it. Being inspiring as a leader and being inspired as a leader is that the balance where we, where we want to walk, right? So being inspirational, being the person who who gives the, the the people who we're leading this 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 momentum to move forward or the drive to move forward by inspiring them? Yeah, the confidence it the gives confidence. them a shot yes, of confidence. confidence. Yay, we can conquer the world. We can do this. Exactly. Yeah. And that's and that's where the like you were talking about earlier, the word magic. That's where the magic happens to be inspired, inspiring, and also be inspired by the people that you're leading. So you have this duality effect that you want to do well and better for them or be the best who you can be for them so that the end goal, the outcome is aligned with the mission and vision of the organization as well, or even your department for that matters. Yeah. Well said. Talk a little bit about empathy and understanding as well. Empathy and understanding. So empathy, of course, we have to go back to the modality, five levels of thinking. First level of thinking is self-centered thinking. Second level of thinking is altruistic thinking. Third level of thinking is expressive thinking, thinking on the aspect of empathy and sympathy, as we were talking about earlier. Empathy, getting into the understanding of being emotionally intelligent on when to be more assertive and when to be a bit more lighthearted for lack of a better phrase. So being not aggressive, but being assertive, being being the portion of, and being assertive, you can't leave from the heart and be assertive. It doesn't have to be like this whole aggressive or passive aggressive or super soft person. When I, when I talk about leading from the heart. Leading from the heart is all about doing the right thing in terms of your integrity as well. Factors into that integrity piece of it. So being emotionally involved or having the empathy aspect of things also transitions over to these other traits of the skill set that you should have as a leader. But it's very defining in terms of how to do it. It's also very strategic. You have to, you have to be in the know, to be very, very self-aware, extremely self-aware, of, and extremely others aware as well. And then you also have to be extremely situationally aware because all three of those has an opportunity to, to get to the heart and start pulling on the strings. Mm-hmm. And it also supports individual growth and development. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. You touched a little bit on servant leadership. Elaborate a little bit more why the servant leadership specifically involves the heart. <clears throat> because in order to empower others, in order to provide 
guidance, in order to be in a, in a position of removing obstacles, in order to be in a position of delegating properly so that they can be successful. It takes this, this open aspect of, of providing the resources that the person needs in order to be successful. So a leader, think about a servant. A servant provides things for the person that he or she is serving. So we're in this provision state uh, or this provisional state of always providing for even our subordinates. Now, you may see this topsy turvy. There was a book written called Servant Leadership by, I forgot what the gentleman's name was. And I read it. It's a good book. Yeah. And it's based on a lot of the principles of the Bible and leading that way. However, the servant being this providing person and, and establishing well-being in the proper culture, us leaders, we're supposed to be the fixers and providers of that. We have to be resourceful or even teach them how to be resourceful when we're removed from the equation because we might not be accessible. That's being servant as a as a leader or being a servant leader that you're talking about. Yeah, and it builds a culture of mutual respect and shared success. Yes. So, yeah. And that's where exactly you want to go because that shared success, if you peel the layers of onion back, go back a few steps, it's all it's all about being provisional for the people that you're serving. Let's talk a little bit about the connection of EI, emotional intelligence, and the heart. So the connection of emotional intelligence. So emotional intelligence, again, being empathetic, that's where that idea comes from as well. So when you tap into the emotions, now the emotions and the heart intertwine like this. For those who can't see me, I got my fingers crossed. They are, they go hand in glove. The two peas in the pod, the Laverne and Shirley, they're the, the knife and fork, right? I mean, they go they go hand in hand all the time. So to be more emotionally involved can mean it does mean that you also have your heart centered on the app, the opportunity. So when you're emotionally involved, you got your heart in it. Now it can go either way though, positive emotional aspect, negative emotional aspect to where people are very highly energetic or even being derogatory at some point, whatever, but the emotional state is not in the right way. But if we are mostly intelligent, we can adhere to different people, different situations at different times and still have the outcome be successful. But you have to have emotional intelligence because you have to understand what state of mind that they're in. And you may have to pull on their heartstrings in order to calm them down so they can get into the right emotional state so that then you can provide the leadership that they need in order to be successful at that moment. So people who lead with the heart, are they good at resolving conflicts, strategic thinking, and, and making sound decisions? They have the right components. They necessarily know the skill set or that they're adept in the skill set. They do have the right component because in order to truly see, especially conflict, in the, the, in the, the components that you're missing, mentioning in there, you have to be able to see where the people are emotionally and be able to tap into that. You can't drive it and or resolve it from a, a place of aggression or being aggressive. It does take a, a standpoint of, you can be assertive, but not aggressive. It does take a standpoint to where you have to, to be able to bring them down so they, they can professionally resolve the situation, just taking conflict resolution for a skill set, but they the person who has access to his or her heart authentically has the right component. Now it's all about learning the skill set and being adept in the skill set. Exactly, skillset. the art. The art of it. Yeah, exactly. Art of it. Yes. Yeah, you have the heart, and then you have the art, like you were talking about earlier. <laughs> yes. And last but not least, let's talk about the positive culture and engagement that it fosters. Cool. Like I was talking about earlier on, I'm going to talk about the culture piece of it. It's a must. This is extremely essential for the leader at the helm to really understand this fact. And in fact, if he or she does it and they find themselves being more of a driver cracking the whip and not really adhering to the culture of the organization, because that person is very much so responsible for how everything else transitions into the organization. Just to give you an idea, I was watching a series on Netflix called Dirty Money. And in one of the episodes, they had the CEO 
uh, and the COO who became the CEO of Volkswagen when they were making their TDI, their diesel engines, and they had this defeat device. Well, they were talking about the culture of the organization that was leading to be very, very deceptive in order to get their product into the marketplace. Well, it, they were talking about it from being from the helm of the organization as well. Just to kind of give you a, a slight or, or an actual reference, making sure that the leader, if the leader is not in the right place from a heart perspective, it's going to be very, very difficult to have a positive culture in the environment, no matter what you do. And until that leader gets uh, the slurp jack out, jerked out of his or her chain, then and then really even come to a whole new brand, apologize to people and start strategically aligning themselves for more positive outcomes, the culture will not change and the engagement will not be there as well either. You may have some engagement, you have people dealing with each other, but the engagement may be toxic. The engagement may be conflict confronting. And these are the organizations who never get out of the storming phase. If you look at the Tuckman model, they never get out of the storming phase. They have the a journey that the they have the forming phase. They got the teams, they form the organization, all the teams, the different departments, but then they get into this place where they get to storming and never get out of that, get to the performing stage Constant. effectively. Yeah. yeah. Exactly yeah. right. All right, that's all the questions you have. Is there anything you want to say to, to conclude? Yeah, folks, just remember that we'll be putting out some information regarding the classes that Yasmin has coming up, critical thinking and strategic thinking. And I will be talking about assertiveness and assertiveness. We'll be talking about this heart aspect of things. We are, remember, folks, we're talking about part eight, the leadership path, the essence of excellence and successful leadership, the heart. The next conversation we're going to be talking about is integrity. Then we're going to go to energy. Then we're going to go to acceptance. Integrity is also a big one. But making sure that you take the information that we have here and just listen to it again. Even if you have to draw the audio, you'll be able to get the audio streaming from pod, our podcasts, like plat platforms like Spotify and Stitcher and Google Podcasts, iTunes. Listen to it again. I guarantee you're going to get something else out of it each time you listen to it. But it's very, very essential to understand how the heart works. Okay? How the heart works. It's all about understanding people. Human nature factors kicked in. All these foundational principles that we spoke about, communication, leadership, community, every all the other past seven sections culminate up into this one section as well. Because if you have the heart permeated with all seven of those sections, you can do very, very well as a leader. So that's all I wanted to add. Yeah, you know, while you were talking about, I was thinking how there is the physical aspects of the heart and then there are emotional aspects of the heart. And sure. last but not the least, uh, least, there are leadership aspects of the heart. The leadership aspects of the heart, right. and that's exactly what we're yeah. talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Which, like I keep saying, is an art. And once you learn that skill, that art, you will become an, a, a leader that leads with the heart. Absolutely. Fantastic. With that. Thanks for that. Folks, I'm Granison Shines here with Yasmin Murray. It was a pleasure talking about the heart absolutely until next time we will be back talking about integrity all right talk to you later folks see you bye, bye.